to do something a little bit different on the video today. Still feeling a bit rough with me uh, strep throat, etc. So um, I thought I'd do a little video of um, how to fillet the cut a brace of pheasant. So these are some I got um, just before Christmas. I've let them hang. hang. I, I, I like to leave mine to hang two or three days before. Now what I don't mess about. Um, plucking them and um, all the rest of it and the, the only bit I do pluck is this bit here which is what I'm about to cut but um, for all the messing about it's just not worth it I skin mine so I should put it that way it's going to stay <laughs> but, uh, there we go so I'm going to start off by cutting this skin or tearing it. You just get your finger in there, and once once you've got it started, away you go. Just tear it open. I'll also <laughs> pull it down to the side. Like this looks like this one's been shot in the leg a bit. Yeah, I don't bother keeping the legs because, to be honest, there's very little on them, and what there is is full of sinew. And unless you pull that sinew out, preferably before you cook it, it's as tough as old boots, and you won't enjoy the leg. So I wouldn't even bother. That's just the fact. That's the crop. Looks like he's been on a bit of corn or something there. Right, there's more fat. I don't worry too much about that. Looks like we've had one shot in the breast there. If you can see that, just about here. Right, now uh, what you do, what I do, is you cut. Now if you, can, you should be able to see that. Right along that top breastbone, just to one side, you'll feel it you feel it catch the bone take it down there now this is a very old very old knife we used to have when we were kids and what I've done is I've sharpened it up purely for me filleting so you can take that there once you've taken the cut that from that top rib I find you don't really have to cut it I do this bit here, but you find you can just scrape it down a bit. I'm trying to keep my fingers out of the way so you can see what I'm doing. I'm scraping down the rib cage, and that way you you literally you're scraping it off the rib, and uh, rather than cutting it and leaving some of the meat on there. I do cut it down to the, oh, I don't know if you can see that, I do cut it down to the shoulders there, yeah, there's a sinew there see, but that sinew there, I don't know if you can see it, that little one there, what you can do, grab, grab hold of that when you got the breast off, and you just pull that out, so um, that way you don't get that little toughness, but if you keep pulling this, pull this, uh, uh, away from the breast you can feel when you're right at the very end of it which is there and it just comes away cut that piece out of there like that just like that and this little piece here this piece here that was sitting up in there like, like that that's what you call the fillet that is really nice and tender that and that's got that little fillet in there I'll put that on that plate and as I say when I get indoors I should get hold of that little bit of sinew there just hold it, I'll do it here actually if I can let's have a look grab it with your nails and just give it a pull like that there you go see out a little bit of sinew all gone put that feather on there that's all out now so and that's the only that's the only tough little bit you get on the breast. 
and then I'll usually turn the old pheasant round because I like to work from the right to left come down on that breastplate again tend to keep your knife pushed into the breastplate that way you'll pick up the rib cage quicker bring that down there see it start because if you don't keep it in tight to the rib cage what will, what will happen is uh, you'll end up leaving the fillet there and the fillet is as I say the best bit now, now that sinew on this side I've managed to cut out quite wider so let's see how we go That's my old dog in the background. Well, not old dog. My, my cocker, my, my gun dog. He's done me proud on this. Yeah, alright, Charlie. Marvellous dog, that is. Well, he's done me proud this year as well. Yeah, this year. I'm not out shooting till the second, so. I think that's the last. Uh, Last shoot day um, for the guns, the rest of them are ours. <laughs> so a bit of luck. Right, a few birds, that's just a bit of blood in there. Right, there's that, there's that sinew again. Sorry, I might have been out of camera shot there, I don't know. I'm going to grab that bit of sinew. And pull that one through, there you go, that's that out. that there, take that bit of feather off, leave these leave these little bits of fat on, these bits here, you want a little bit to cook with, but if you don't like too much fat, that I should just push that open, I should push that bit open there, or I'll just give it a slice, just to make sure there's nothing in there, um, if need be when you're rinsing it, just to squeeze that bit out if it, bo if it bo bothers you, you know what I mean? Right, that's that, that breast done. Now as you can see, take that off of there. That's how much. And I say the legs, not really worth it for what little bit there is on there. I think there's more on a hamster. Still, there you go. So, just fold that up. It seems, I know it seems a shame. And a waste, but it's not when you consider it. There is another way that you can actually do these, and that's standing on the standing on these wings like this on the floor, and you pull the legs up like this. And if you pull it a certain way, you pull that you pull that um, crown straight out, skinned and all. But I don't want to do it in case I mess it up because I want to. Um, oh, this one's like you see. They say the bit of a breast shot here, this one. Um, I don't want to mess the, the breast up, so there we go. Now you don't really need a knife to start this skinning. You know, you can just uh, tear at it. But it's just to get your fingers in there to to tear that skin, see? And so it just pull it like that. There she goes. It's got a lot of fat on it. This this is a hen. Oh dear, there is a lot of fat on that. Look at all that fat, look. Alright if you want want a bit of fat, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna have all that lot. Cool, no that is excessive that is. So I've been living well that one. Well, it looks like it's been shot up near the backside somewhere. A little bit of bleed in there. And a wing shot. That's alright, but the bit I want is okay. So, what we do, we do no more. We'll get, get stuck in and get this to...
get this breast off. <coughs> I do like my sport, I've had uh, always done sport. My father bought me a single barrel, single hexagon barrel. Uh, I think the gun was made in Yugoslavia or somewhere. Uh, no, Czechoslovakia. That's right, made in Czechoslovakia and uh, I know that looks a bit muller, but believe you me, that, that ain't too bad. That that's just blood on the meat. It's not. Um, it's not ruining the meat. Get off! That's it. The reason that's hanging on that bit there is because that's the. Um, that was the sinew hanging in there. Put that on there. I'll get that I'll get that piece of sinew out later. Okay, there it is there. I'll get that out later. But um, because this one's done a bit of internal bleeding, a little bit of a stink from it, but it's not gonna affect the meat. I'm gonna go over that when I'm indoors. Another nice piece of sorry if I keep going out of camera shot on. Well, look at that. Only winter time it brings the flies round, would you believe it? Yeah, I've always been uh, hunting as a, a young boy. So my dad got me this little single barrel, uh, 12 gauge. Trouble was, the, uh, the ejector on it didn't work very well. And um, I found I had to... <laughs> Go around carrying a stick. So when I fired the shot, uh, it broke the stick down the muzzle end to uh, push the cartridge, spent cartridge out, and what well, fun and games! But but that was half that was half the fun of it, you know. But uh, today, these modern guns, well, my God, well, I've got some modern guns, but. Uh, it makes you appreciate. Uh, see, there's that fillet again. They are lovely. They just just lay in there on the breastplate. They're beautiful. They are. And um, yeah, these are uh, modern guns. They uh, makes you wonder after time how, how did you manage without today's technology? But you did. You've done it all. I mean, these sort of things. I used to catch these. Used to catch these as a kid. What we call with a top hat, which was a um, a little cone. Put a bit of corn in it with a bit of uh, treacle or something like that. As soon as they go to peck at it, that's it. They got this little uh, look like a dunce's hat on, and that's it. They just sit there, and you just go up and pick them up, or you go up in the in the middle of the night. See him roosting up in the trees and just knock them out of a, out of the trees with a catapult. But uh, as they say, those were the days. Right, um, there it is. Really, that's your uh, that's your little fillet. Uh, so it didn't take too long, as long as uh, as long as this video's been on and I've been rambling on, as you know I do. But um, that might have been informative to someone that wasn't too sure about how to tackle it and. Oh, I don't really fancy plucking a pheasant, you know. Yes, the skin does tear very easily, very easily. But um, it's not worth all the hassle plucking it and to try and roast it like you do a conventional chicken. Um, so uh, I don't bother. As I say, it's quicker you to skin the whole bird if you want and then just paunch it and uh, rinse it out, bung it in the oven. I don't know, chuck an orange or onion up its backside and then put it on a baking tray and uh, cover it over with foil. But you have to remember, if you are going to roast a bird, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> don't, don't forget to put foil over it because um, if you don't, especially if you've skinned it, it will go like leather and you you just ruin the bird and you think, well, I'll just add that in the oven there and I've got nothing for dinner now because I've just ruined it. So, this is... Uh, Signing off, Charlie Tango 1. Catch you later.